Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of the Trading Bot in Python series. In this series, we're looking at employing a systematic factor investing strategy in a trading bot we have coded in Python. Now, if you haven't watched the previous episodes, I'd suggest that you go and watch them now. There'll be a card up here and a link in the description to the playlist as we are going to be looking at a lot of the topics we have covered in previous episodes. Now, where I left you in the last episode, we had a look at our backtest performed by our trading bot and we identified two places that we could improve. The first place was looking at controlling our fees and therefore minimizing the trades that we're doing. And the second place was the position concentration and looking to minimize the maximum position that we had in a certain stock. So the way to fix this is by using an optimizer which will constrain on the stock weights and the turnover. So the trades that the trading bot does. Now to build this, we're going to head into PyCharm or any other Python IDE. So here you can see I've built our optimizer class. This consists of an initialize method, an optimize function, and a get constraints function. Now this function down at the bottom here, this run optimization method, this is just to demonstrate and make sure that our optimizer is working. So let's have a quick talk about the package that we're going to be using for our optimizer. We're going to be using CVXPy as it's a great package to do convex optimization. So let's have a look at some of the parameters of our optimizer class. So here we've got our initial portfolio. Now our initial portfolio is simply a data frame with the symbols as the index, the initial weight as one column, and then the alpha score as another column. So you can see here we're just using a, an example data frame which has Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet and Tesla in it. Now the other parameters that we have is a turnover parameter. Now our turnover parameter is how much of the portfolio that we can trade. So if we have a turnover of 20% that means we can sell 20% of our portfolio and then buy 20% of our portfolio. So we've recycled 20% of that portfolio. Now the other parameter that we have is this max weight parameter. So as we saw in the back test, we were getting weights up to 0.5 max weights. And we want to really limit this so that we don't get a lot of specific risk in our portfolio. And we want to introduce diversification. The reason we want to introduce diversification is because it reduces unsystematic risk and leads to better risk adjusted returns. Now the last parameter that we have are whether we want to be long short or not. So I've set that as default to true. Now let's talk through a bit of our initialized method. So you can see these first four here, we're taking our initial weight data frame and turning it into four separate arrays. We have our symbols array, our initial weight array, and then just, I'm gonna quickly skip over this one, and then we've got our alpha scores array. Now in our optimization, the variable that we're going to be changing is the optimal weights of the stocks. And so you can see here, we use CV, which is a CVXPy package, dot variable, and we set it to the same shape as the initial weight. And so this variable will be used in the optimization and will be changed. So that's why we set it as a specific CVXPy array here. So you can see the next three lines here, all we're doing is setting our constraints as attributes for the optimizer class. And then here we get into a few more constraints. So the first one here, minimum weight, this is also gonna be the minimum weight of the stock. So if we're going long short, that means we can have negative short weights as well. So we set our minimum weight to be the negative of our max weight. So if we set our max weight to be 0.1, we'd have a minimum weight of minus 0.1. We also have our net exposure. Now our net exposure is our exposure to the market. So having a net exposure of zero means we are long the same amount that we are short. And our gross exposure, so this is the absolute value of our holdings. And so this is our leverage. So having a leverage of one means we're using the same amount of buying power as we have capital. So we want to make sure that our net exposure is equal to zero for long short. Now, if we look at long only, we have our minimum weight as zero as we can't go short. And then we have our net exposure as one as we're only buying stocks, we're not selling stocks as well. For both our gross exposure, so our leverage is going to be one for both. So let's move on to the constraints. So as you can see here, our first constraint is our minimum weight constraint. And what we want is our optimal weights. So this was the CVXPy variable that we defined up here. We want our optimal weights to be greater than our minimum weights. Same thing with max weight, we want our optimal weight to be less than our max weight. And so now we move into our turnover. So remember what I said before, turnover is how much of the portfolio that you can recycle. So how much you can sell and then buy. So here you can see we're taking our optimal weights 
and then we're deducting our initial weights. So we're calculating the trades. So that's optimal weight minus initial weight, that gives us our trade. We're getting the absolute value to account for sells as well as buys. And then we're taking the sum of that. And so that gives us the total portfolio weight that we're trading. And we want that to be less than double our turnover. So we can sell 10% of our portfolio and buy 10% of our portfolio, and that will be a turnover of 10%. Next, we've got our net exposure. So that's just the sum of the optimal weights. And so we want that to be equal to our net exposure. So that's gonna be zero for long short, so that the long weights should equal the negative of the short weights. And then our gross exposure is the sum of the absolute values. And we set that to be less than or equal to our gross exposure, so our leverage. So that's one. And then we return all of these constraints back. So here you can see our optimized method. You can see that we get our constraints, which was the function we just looked at. And then we create our optimization problem. So here we put cv.problem. So this is the cvxpy package. And we want it to maximize the sum of the optimal weight times our alpha. So that's the weighted alpha of the portfolio. So we want to maximize that. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to maximize our alpha. So maximize our expected returns given our constraints. Once we've done that, we give it optimization.solve, which it tries to solve it. And then we get our status. So I'm just gonna quickly debug this here so we can have a look into the optimization object to see what it has inside it once you've solved it. So just to quickly show you what's actually happening when we debug this script here. We've got our run optimization method. All we're doing is we're declaring this initial portfolio data frame, passing in a turnover of 0.2, max weight of 0.3, setting our long short to equal true, and then we're just doing opt.optimize. So that opt object there is our optimizer class, it's our instance of the optimizer class, and we run that optimize function. So that's all that's happening. You can see we, we do run optimization there. Right, let's have a look inside this optimization object. So this is the cvxpy object here. Let's open this up. So you can see we have our status. So our status says it's optimal, which means it's found the optimal solution. So none of the constraints were breached. And then it gives us our value. So this value is the sum of our optimal weights times our alpha. So we can see that we've got a weighted alpha of 0.2. Now this alpha score is completely arbitrary because you can give it scores of rather than 0.2, you can give it scores of 20, etc. So this is only relative to the alpha scores that you give your own trading bot. Cool, and now we can look inside, we've got the solution and then we've got our primal variables and we've only got one and that will be our optimal weights. As you can see here, it's just an array. So we had four stocks and it has outputted these optimal weights. So let's close that down and we'll just have a look at some of the logic at the end of here. So what we're saying here is we're saying if the status is optimal, so it's found the solution without breaching the constraints. So all we're doing here is just getting the list of the keys because sometimes the key uh, might be different to zero. And so we're just making sure that we're getting our optimal weight array here. We're rounding it to three decimal places and then we're creating a pandas series with the symbols as the index. If it's not optimal, then we return the initial weights rounded to three decimal places as a pandas series with the symbols as the index. And then we return our optimal portfolio, which is that pandas series and the status. Nice, so let's run that again and look at the output in this run optimization method we've got at the bottom. So here you can see we're getting the result and the status, which is what we returned. Okay, so let's have a look at our result. So you can see we've got the weights for our four stocks. Now if we look at our starting weights, so Apple had a starting weight of minus 0.25, Microsoft minus 0.25, Google 0.25 and Tesla 0.25. So you can see it was equally weighted long and short and it was equally weighted for each stock as well. So you can see that the alpha score for Microsoft was worse than Apple's. So we want to decrease our weight in Microsoft as much as we can. And that was the same for Google here. It had a better alpha score than Tesla, so we want to increase Google's weight as much as we can. So here you can see we've got our optimal weights, and you can see that Apple's weight was increased to minus 0.2, Microsoft's weights was decreased to minus 0.3, which is the maximum weight that we can have, and the same with Google. Google's weight was increased to 0.3, which is the maximum weight that we have. And you can see that 0.3 plus 0.2, 0.5, and minus 0.2 plus minus 0.3 is minus 0.5, so we have a net exposure of zero. Absolute sum of that is also one, so we're not using any leverage. 
So you can see here that we were constrained by our maximum weight, but we weren't constrained by our turnover. So let's have a look at increasing our weight to 0.5. So ideally, we want our Google weight to be 0.5 and our Tesla weight to be zero and the same respectively negatively for Microsoft and Apple. However, you can see that we didn't get those values and that was because we're now being constrained by our turnover. So you can see that Apple and Microsoft weights actually stayed the same and that is because the optimizer has figured out that it's better to increase Google's weight and decrease Tesla's weight than to decrease Microsoft weight and increase Apple's weight. As you can see, the difference between these two is 0.1 and the difference between these is 0.25. And so it's increased Google's weight as much as it can and decreased Tesla's weight as much as it can. So it's increased Google's weight by 20%. So it's bought 20% Google and sold 20% Tesla. So you can see that our optimizer is working perfectly how we would expect it to. So that's nice. As you can see here, we've built an optimizer. So it maximizes the alpha while we define a turnover value and a maximum weight value. So that turnover value is to reduce our trading, reduce our fees, and our maximum weight is to reduce our unsystematic risk and introduce diversification. Okay, so there you go. We have finished coding our optimizer. It works how we expect it to work. And in the next episode, we'll be looking at implementing it into our train bot in Quant Connect. Once we've implemented it, we're going to evaluate our backtest like we did in the previous episode and hope to see better returns. So thank you very much for tuning in for this video. As always, if you've got any questions or suggestions or comments, you can leave a comment down below. You can drop me a message on LinkedIn. You can tweet me on Twitter. And with that, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.